Hello, this is Kylie J and S, and today we are going to be covering the Queen Mothership Enterprise Architecture Series. This is based off of part two of the Queen Mothership book. Part one was written in 2023 years ago. It covered the history of matriarchal societies of melanated people, primarily in Africa, but part two which is the Queen Mothership Enterprise Architecture. It covers what we can do today as black Americans so that we can build our own structures of self-determination. We can have our own autonomous micro cities and we're going to do that in an egalitarian sense based off of what melanated people, based off of what we are known to do. Because whether you're from the Americas or whether you're from even Africa, some of you have both ancestry within you um our societies historically before colonial times before slavery were matriarchal they were diarchal as well so men always had um certain positions women always had certain positions and they worked together to get things done women had considerably more roles of power considerably more freedom and more power in melanated people's society versus Western society. Um, so now what we see is structures today that are Western and they're patriarchal. And unfortunately, what melanated people have done is try to mimic their societies off of what they see Westerners doing. And I argue and I do make the case that that is what is somewhat holding us back because we are putting each other into boxes as humans. Um, we're limiting, we're suppressing the power of the divine feminine because that is what white people do they suppress the divine feminine they've always did that so melanated people don't have a history of doing that so when i see melanated people especially in africa today going out of their way to, to sort of use you know religion or to use uh well, whatever we see the dominant society doing, when they are mimicking their their structures off of them, they're hitting the head. I've noticed they're they're not they're not getting anywhere with it, and they won't get anywhere with it because you have to to know what time we are in, to know what day we are in. You have to understand the cosmos. You have to understand the nature of the universe itself via electromagnetism, as well as planets themselves the placement of the of the of the constellations and the planets themselves the stars um to know the era that we're in and so i understand that i understand a little bit about that and um i want to bring this framework to the black american and 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 i want to bring this framework to the black american because the enterprise architecture of the queen mothership is a structure of how we build something from the ground up from the grassroots from the ground up as far as micro cities and complete autonomy complete autonomy like how will we work together if we don't have fiat currency how will we procure water how will we procure land what will we have on that land how will we build our villages what materials will we build these 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 housings and this housing material out of what how will we get it so the, the queen mothership enterprise we talk about like how, what is the governance who's gonna who's gonna what committees are gonna be available who's gonna run what what are the men gonna be doing what are the women gonna be doing how do they relate to one another and that is very important to know so the queen mothership Arch enterprise architecture is just teaching and showing like okay black americans whoever want to build whoever want to come together and let's really get something popping in terms of our own shit. Let's do it. And we're doing it through an egalitarian sense. It is going to be matriarchal. And men are more than welcome. Because I know a lot of people are getting hung up on. They, 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 they are in the matrix. And they have no idea when someone says what is a matriarchal egalitarian system. It's a structure with certain processes in place in terms of the governance in terms of how power is welded out the book details that in key we're going to go through it all we're going to talk about the various councils we're going to talk about the role of men we're going to talk about what the role of women 
We're going to talk about the role of the elders and the children. And this is for the Black American, the precious Black American, Black American men, Black American women. You're going to be working together. There is going to be no separation. There's not going to be anybody getting dominated, nobody getting emasculated, nobody getting suppressed, nobody getting femicided, no, none of that shit that y'all deal with in the Matrix. All this stuff about y'all fighting like cats and dogs and gender wars and all that. The Queen Mothership Enterprise architecture, you will not have none of that. We run as a unit. We run together. We move as a unit. We we work as a unit. We build as a unit. Black American men, black American women. Okay? And it's not going to be everybody. It's going to be for certain black American women, certain black American men with very high vibration. You have to have a very high level of consciousness to even understand some of the information that I'll be giving out. And those who say, you know what? Yeah, let's let's build something together. Why we need something on our own. We need our own schools. We need our own land. We need our own housing. We need our own co-op systems. We need our own food. We need our own water. Yeah, let's do this shit. Let's get something popping. And let's have a code of conduct. Let's have some tenets and values and some structure that we go by. We're only us. We looking out for us. We protecting our culture. We're gatekeeping our culture. We are loving one another deeply. We're uplifting one another. The black American woman is uplifting the black American man. The black American man is uplifting this black American woman. And we're having a small little enclave, okay? And that's what it's about. And we're protecting one another. And we're, we're fulfilling our role of the divine masculine, divine feminine on planet Earth, using the laws of electromagnetism, understanding the very nature of the universe, and honoring that about melanated people, honoring that about many of our ancient structures, whether you're indigenous to America or you have African descent. Your tribe, your people, most likely came in a brush somewhere with some matriarchal egalitarian system. So we're going to talk about that. And this is, again, I know because I know I have some Africans that subscribe to me. I know I have some Africans that be listening. The Queen Mothership Enterprise Architecture System as a framework and something to be implemented. It, you can, I will give you permission, and it says this in the book. You as an African, you have permission to open up a queen mothership branch in your homeland, which is Africa. If some of these women and the men in Africa say, you know what, we like what the black Americans are doing, but guess what? It also says in the book that this is a black American invention. It's a black American concept. You cannot try to come and steal and say you did this and you did. This is a structure for the black American, but I understand that the African woman she got certain things going on with her African man. If she if she can over in Africa, if she can find a way to to get the men on board there, she can use the framework. I don't have any problem with with that. I don't. But just know that for this series, I'm going to be mentioning Black American only because when I set up the the when I set up the branch that I want to build with my people, it is going to be just with Black Americans in America, and. The first thing that we will cover is what is the Queen Enterprise architecture? What is the Queen Mothership Enterprise architecture? What does that mean? Okay. And I want to read to you some parts verbatim from the book uh, based off of like which chapters. I won't be reading the whole book, but like some of the key parts, I just want to, I want to just get it out for you. I, I didn't write that book to like make any money off of it. I wrote it to actually protect the intellectual property and the copyright pretty much. But I had always planned to just be able to get all of that out to you anyways. If I could release the, the you know, the PDF eventually, that is one of the ones that I, I don't, I didn't care if I made money off of that. That was just for me to get my ideas protected because, you know. A lot of stuff that I be putting out there, just <laughs> uh, other people just run with it, and that's fine. But one way that I protect myself is through writing writing books. A lot of a, a lot of the times, I have to get all that energy out, anyways, from that neuroticism. But uh, it's mainly done for that reason. But the Queen Mothership Enterprise Architecture, you'll see me read uh, damn near about seventy percent of the book on YouTube. I'm going to do that because. I need the black American to understand where is my line of thinking, what is my agenda, what is my motives, what are my intentions of talking about this queen mothership, is this just for women, where are the men, is this feminism, is this that, you know a lot of people they think like oh my gosh queen mothership this is, you're trying to call yourself queens and y'all trying to dominate men and y'all trying to do Miss Sandry and it's like 
uh this it's so cringe because again this is based off of melanated history melanated melanated science melanated philosophy this is based off the laws of electromagnetism the laws of nature it's pretty much based off of the way elephants run their infrastructure in the way dolphins and whales i studied those animals the way lions run their infrastructure i've studied these animals to be like okay Melanated people kind of think like that too. And we try to play these animals like they're so inferior to us. And they're not. The dolphin and the, and the whale and the, and the elephant is not inferior to the human mind. They're not. They are extremely intelligent creatures around this bitch. Same with the lion. So I was looking at these animals and I realized they are matriarchal, by the way. We don't want to wake that up. And I, I looked at the matriarchal animals as well. Horses, cows. Uh, even some insects too. So I, I really got deep there because I said the way that, I, and I'm going to say this emphatically, the way that Western patriarchy is ran, the way white men set up their system with white women, and also the way religion is set up, Abrahamic religions, are, they weren't always like that. Like I can bring, I, if for, for the things that they tell you about these Abrahamic religions, I can bring you some esoteric text that that disproves it. That was taken out of the Bible, that are seen as not uh, heretical in, in a sense, but they were originally a part of the Bible. And due to the Council of Nicaea or Nicaea, they removed certain books that talks about this information that I give f through you know freely. Like if you look, if you read uh, you know like that uh, Law of Gender book it, or watch the law of gender video on my youtube channel many of that information it was originally in the bible um it was taken out <laughs> but um the way that those religions and the way that western patriarchy is set up is not in nature but what you will find it's not it's not in tune with what you will find in nature it's just not and i know a lot of people want to believe that it is but once you start studying raw nature and you really start to look at your own history as melanated people, whether you're in America or Africa, then you get to see like, okay, something's not right here between black men and black women. And wanting to suppress the divine feminine, just like how you see white men do with their women, that is going to be the downfall of us continually. That will be the downfall of us. So I argue that our structures need to mimic what we see in nature our structures need to be completely holistic completely autonomous they need to consider the role of men and women in an egalitarian sense and it needs to be extremely extremely rooted in pragmatism and our structures need to be extremely rooted in our systems our way of life our thinking the way we think is different. The way we move is different as melanated people. And that's stuff that we need to consider. When you try to go off in this matrix and follow whatever you see other groups of people doing and try to, when you buy into their narratives without studying for yourself, that's 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 where you go downhill. And I know a lot of this gender war stuff that's been going on between black, Amer between black men and black women, you know, once you start to, when, and when you look at this gender war stuff that's been going on, when you really start to like study that stuff, and I, I have been following what was going on with the genders since 2015. And to be honest, a lot of this is rooted because y'all want to keep following after this this system. You keep on mimicking your, your structures or, or trying to emulate what you see white people doing. Both of y'all, the men and the women. That's why you keep fucking up. That's why y'all arguing like cats and dogs fighting each other and to be honest it's not even so much black americans doing that as much as i thought it was i hate to say it i know i'm gonna get some slack i'm noticing there's a huge difference in the culture between uh the african men and women the way they relate to each other and then the black american men and women and that frames our outlook on these relationships and gender relations itself you know so to be honest the african woman she's on a different path than say the black american woman because they got some serious stuff that they're going through with their men they got some serious stuff over in africa that they are doing to those women that to be honest 
you can't really see in, in black American culture. They don't ever want to talk about it. They come over here and just to say, all oh, black people are doing this. But it's really, when you start to really look at it, you really get to the nitty gritty. And even when you start to look at the people who was promoting that manosphere stuff, who was promoting, uh, you know, like the hatred of black women. When you start to study them characters, they weren't even black American men. They weren't. They were literally immigrants that were black, that were, that were dark skinned, that had melanin. But they were not black American at all. Like Tommy Sotomayor and O'Shea Duke and all that stuff. Like them people were not. These Those people are not from our tribe. They're not black American. They're not indigenous black American. They're not. They have no connection to our people. But then they all on YouTube saying black this, black that, black woman this, black woman that. And then you start to look at it and you'd be like, those are not even black Americans. Those are not black American men. You know? And when he went, when Tommy Sotomayor went to Harlem to go to a conscious community event, they end up beating the shit out of him out there because of that. And now we see like like these these differences. Or even when you see like the people from like Fresh and Fit, they have they they, they love to just bash women and they get on there and they just bash women. And then you be thinking, okay, this is, you, you see, you know, supposedly brown skin, so you think it is these are black men. And those again, immigrants. This they were not black American men. So, and, what, and I have been inculcated for the last two years, I was really inculcated and insulated within the indigenous black American community. The indigenous black American community is a little bit different than say like the Freedmen black American community uh, in ADOS. We're all one people, but we, we have different approaches to politics and ideologies even the way we move and whatnot. I did spend time around the Freedmen. I spent some time around ADOS. Um, honestly, because I see us all as one people and I always was against the divide. I was always against that. I'm on record saying that from two years ago, three years ago, damn near that. I just see us all as black Americans. But within that, I, I do recognize and respect that people like to be ADOS, people like to be Freedmen, FBA. Um, and then you have the black Americans that's that's indigenous. And then you have, uh, what else is there? You have Negro, then you have Gullah Geechee, Creole. You know, I've just always seen this as one people, even though we might have different geographic locations, different ideologies, different politics, different approaches to things. And I took note of that as, a, as an objective observer, like as a participant observationist um, and ethnographer. To be honest, I I was fascinated by everyone. I was so fascinated, and I'm gonna get back on my point and what I want to make. I was so fascinated with the Freedmen's, the Ados, the um, the Black American Indigenous, the the Gullah Geechees, the the Negroes. To me, I'm like, wow, the FBAs, and I'm just like, this is so fascinating to me to see these different camps. And to see the differences, but to also know that these are the same people, because you could feel that they're the same people. In many instances, unless some of them may have a little more Black European ancestry or a little more African ancestry than others, um, but you could really feel like, damn, like this is it was to, to for someone that has an ethnography background. That that's fascinating to them. That that's like that like, and I know like again my love in my heart is so broad for our people that i really don't care what you identify as but i will say for two years i did spend some time let me get back to my point i spent some time with the black americans who know their indigenous ancestry who rock who goes with their indigenous ancestry based off their genealogy and to be honest they were matriarchal like i could like when i, I remember like spending days on end hours on end talking with the men that were black american indigenous the women as black american indigenous and they they were teaching me about their matriarchal egalitarian structures and that to me was so fascinating because they would they would talk about how they were matrilineal but also matriarchal and um so i was like wow this is really cool let me there's here's a group of, of black americans who openly state that they are matriarchal and, and the men the uh the, the men and the women the, and the men just don't care and to me that was extremely enlightening now what's 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 really interesting okay so we did that and i did that for two years and to be honest it was different 
there was these were my people so then i i, I also hung with some ados and freeman um because again I didn't know that people was like into all that organization stuff. It wasn't about organization. I thought I really looked at that as, okay, this is a lineage. Here's the black American lineage. And then here are people who prefer to call themselves ADOS. Here are people who prefer to call themselves Freeman. Here are people that prefer to call themselves FBA. That was my thinking going in. And then within that, people were doing other things in terms of these organizations and making it like like really political. Um, but for me, I was more so into the okay the, the identification part of it the the cultural a aspect of that so i did ended up um hanging around because we were really you know combating ethnocide and pan-africanism and so believe it or not all of these groups were against ethnocide i don't that they, they won't they may they always want to fight and argue with each other and whatnot but i know for a fact as a as an ethnographer as a sociologist looking from the outside looking in on all that shit and being a black american but but telling but making that promise to myself that i'm going to treat everybody the same and love on all these people the same um they all was against ethnocide they all was against flat blackness they all was against pan-africanism they all was against the genocide of the black american we, and we were all for reparations or restitution of some kind we may have disagreed about okay i'm indigenous no we came from africa oh we came from both Oh, we black Moors. Oh, we this. You know, they had different little things going on and whatnot. But the overall themes was we want reparations. We want land. We're against ethnocide. We're against flat backness. And we're against pan-Africanism. And another thing they don't want to tell you, because the, the black American indigenous openly says that they're matriarchal. But they're a matriarchal egalitarian structure. And you could feel it. And it was very powerful. But... What's fascinating is that when I also would be around the ADOS and speak, we would just for hours just talk about reparations for hours and and or or be arguing, unfortunately, with some of them Africans who was trying to ethnocide us. Sometimes we would do hours doing that. And um, when I personally would be in those spaces, I would just be like, OK, how do the men and the women how is this different from the men and the women in the black American indigenous community? Do the black American men and women in the ADOS uh, uh, classification, how do they relate? How do the men and the women in the freedmen relate? Do you know that it's, it's actually very similar? It's, it's, it's very similar to what I witnessed in the black American indigenous. It's a little bit different with the freedmen because I noticed that some of those freedmen they let anchor, they let tethers, I won't say tethers, but they let people who are half black American with different cultures kind of get in the mix. Like some of them be swirling and some of them be having half tethers. Like they be half black American, half something else. And they kind of throw the energy off, I noticed. But I remember being in um, around ADOS people, ADOS, and we would be in there for hours or days on end, days on end hours 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 just talking with one another like we had each other's phone numbers and shit and i remember having the the, the energy was the same as what you will find say in the black american indigenous group in terms of the men and the women relating to another now they might they might diverge on views such as oh we come from africa oh we actually were always here that was pretty much the the crooks of the the the, the, the differences for instance the black american indigenous they they believe that they were always here many of them have the proof of that i personally believe them i personally believe that many black americans were already here i also believe that there were three slave trades in america one of which was the transatlantic slave trade so some black americans definitely come from that descent some of them do and those who are not finding indigenous tribes on their genealogy they're going to identify more with being from African descent or American descent of slavery. That's their business. They have that right. But I know that was pretty much the major differences. Other than that, the way the black American man and black American woman was relating in the ADOS sense was very similar to how the black American indigenous were relating to one another. Same with freedmen and uh, the freedmen men and women. Only if there was not a bunch of tethers around or by that i mean 
Freeman, who's Jamaican and all that shit, because they, they don't want to talk about that, but I got the scoop on some of that shit. Some of them people are not black American, and Freeman's let them around. That's a separate, that's a separate topic. But I'm saying this to say that to, to compare that for to a group that is openly matriarchal egalitarian and to see some of the similarities not in a sense of okay because we got baby mamas or because uh there's only a 39 percent marriage rate not from none of the negative statistics that white people put on our people or because of the realities of of dealing with uh unequitable society and what that breeds in terms of of the access to resources and and the and the wealth gap and all of the gaps that we deal with not from that sense we're talking about the structure itself how do the men and the women relate when they have to talk about building that is matriarchal egalitarian i'm not talking about our community at large is pretty much it's not matriarchal and it's not patriarchal it's, it's neither one it's just to be honest a bunch of chaos um because uh when you study matriarchal systems whether they are uh pre-colonial or just in the animal kingdom they have key components key structures ex they're ex extremely structured societies and even the same thing with patriarchal societies they have structures they have key things that they're known for so for patriarchy you know you'll see things like the the emphasis on resources of, the, of men their ability to obtain resources you'll see the uh the, the the problem solving and the leadership being done mainly by men and you'll see that women have certain roles that it incentivizes the divine masculine to quote unquote protect and provide what are they protecting their women from they protecting the women from men other men <laughs> in this patriarchy so nonetheless they have these things where they have to get women to buy into a patriarchal society some things that's supposed to incentivize and benefit them one of which is okay men gonna uh you know take care of the bread and butter and the women's gonna do more of the um chores and housework and all this stuff and take care of the children and whatnot come find out melanated people had a different system than that because there was less emphasis on hoarding resources. There was less e emphasis on domination and control of the female essence amongst melanated people. So a man's value in melanated culture, whether it's African or American, is not based on a man's ability to have these, obtain these resources or maintain these resources. Uh, there's other ways to value a man. And the same thing with women. There's other ways to value a woman besides just have them birthing children. Um, and, and melanated people, they were okay with that. They knew that. Uh, they honored that. That's a very real reality. And it's even becoming more real today as we go into a different age. As well as just a different, um, a different paradigm in, in general. So when we talk about is the black American community a matriarchy, some of us are. Some of us are. If you have an indigenous background, you most likely are. You most likely are. If you uh, don't have an indigenous background, I would say it's just a little bit all over the place. In some aspects, yes. In some aspects, no. Because if this was a successful matriarchy or even a successful, it's not. It's definitely not a successful patriarchy. Because our men are answering to other men. So it's not a successful patriarchy. And the women don't really run this system. They're not running a queen mothership. They're not running a successful matriarchy. So it's not a it's a failed matriarchy and it's a failed patriarchy, if you ask me. It's it's nothing. It's just chaos. Um and what the Queen Mothership Enterprise architecture does is it lays out exactly what that system looks like as far as a, a matriarchal egalitarian system what does that look like it's very structured it's one of the things that you would notice it's probably one of the most structured systems that that is out there to date uh, that one could think of it's a uh, highly structured it's highly uh, decentralized for the most part it's decentralized but there's a lot of uh, structure and that's important because that's what black americans need 
That is what black Americans need to get them to the next level in terms of making sure that they're getting their power, their empowered in this system and making sure that they can do things for themselves. Um, and we've always had it that way, but we really need something to take us over that hump, something to take us over that hump of us dealing with this unfair system. And we need, we need stuff for ourselves. We need our own power. We need our own autonomy. So the Queen Mothership Enterprise architecture just gives you that. Now, is this thing where this men's, they hate matriarchal societies and whatnot. They're burying certain information about matriarchal societies. Um, for one, and it's unfortunate that Africans do this, Africans themselves refuse to acknowledge their history before colonialism even their particular tribes um this is a real reality if you ask them some of them are honest but for the most part they won't they won't talk about the matriarchies they'll say that they don't exist they'll do anything they'll go through extreme extreme lengths to deny uh that there was ever a matriarchy in africa um the thing is the americas that that is a little more obvious so it's less harder for some reason though the black americans who come from indigenous uh backgrounds they don't go out of their way to deny that their tribe was matriarchal they don't do that i noticed a big difference and another thing i, I think that comes from just brainwashing colonialism brainwashing because I, I don't understand like why would you go out of your way when you have like oral histories when you have your own um documentation of of your own history why would you just ignore that why wouldn't you not why wouldn't you not see what that's about i don't understand that but that's what africans do and to be honest it's um to their detriment from from the outside looking in and as someone who was a former pan-african and someone who saw you know i was a pan-african when i was doing that research on the queen mothership and to be honest that that it will be their their biggest downfall is not studying their own structures and i know they won't see it now but i mean I, I, it ain't nothing i can do about it because i've i've decided to put all my focus on black americans anyways so i don't even really think about it anymore but it, it does it does really it, it really is disheartening because it's like okay this is clear as day was holding them back but you know me as a black American, I, I, I've, I've made the promise to just focus on my own people because you get more with, you know, people who are on the same agenda, have the same interests, have the same goals versus a bunch of people getting together that just have different goals, different interests. But y'all just saying you the same and you're not going to get anywhere because you can't see eye to eye on certain things. So with the black American society, I'm pushing a structure that you don't have to buy into. I think that you should listen to the structure first. I think you should listen to it and assess whether or not that's something you can get with and get behind. And this is for the men and the women. Truly assess like the nature of the leadership you want to be led by, who steps up, what are they talking about? What are they bringing to the table? Did they do did they do they really have a grasp on what they are talking about. They are real ideologue. And a real ideologue will die for what they believe. If they truly is serious about empowerment and getting this black American back on track on what they need to do to be in power. You will see a real ideologue go to the extremes to protect their people. You will see them uh, be very serious about building, building for their people, building with their people. And, and if need be, you will see that motherfucker die if someone threatens them, someone if someone attacks their people, if someone, you know, so you have to assess, is this person a real ideologue? Who is backing this person? And that's what I want you guys to do with me. You ain't going to find shit because I'm I'm, I don't have no corporate backing. <laughs> Queen Mothership is not, none of, none of the stuff that I've put out is linked. To, I own 100% of everything I've ever put out. There, I have no backing. I've never took a one dollar from any corporate structure from any white structure from I, I have asked black men to help me out over the years for the last 10 years i got emails and proof of me asking 
uh, any of you black black power niggas, all of you, all the niggas that y'all love, that y'all swear is so about empowerment and about and about to lead y'all to, to reparations on shit. I done asked all of them for help putting some of the stuff that I got together. Uh, even with my university, whether it was other businesses, um, you know, very respectful, like like whole business plans, like twenty five page business plan, not just some nigga, just some random spoon idea, just coming and say, hey, you know, this is like, no, here here's some projections, here are some, you know, you know, here's I try to do, you know, the cash, you know, how you make um, you know, business plan, you try to have, you know, your operational expenses and all this stuff, you know, I I really put like that, all that shit together, I'm like. You know, because I, I I I come from a very different background. I was raised conscious, so you know, um, when I came out, I I was like, okay, let me just put stuff together as best as I can. Then, you know, ask some of the men in the community to support it. None of them did, um, and and I, 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 there's some obvious reasons why I think that is the case. Um, I'll get into that probably in another video because some of these people are now just coming back around and I think other people I think they see like damn what the hell like this person was dead ass serious this person literally uh, was the real deal got a lot of gifts bring a lot to the table so now I am working with um, you know some black men and then you know and, and whatnot but um, at that time you know, I was heavily into the conscious community, so it was always like you just go to your own if you need something, or you know, if you if you're if you're looking for help with business or a, a, an investment and stuff. But I went to all them niggas, and to be honest, I, I didn't get no play. I still don't get no play. Uh, I, I I went to those niggas to ask for you know some advice and and even help with business, and you know, it did not pan out that way. So I had to do everything on my own. So when I went to, you know, these black power niggas, being from the conscious community and, and asking them for business advice, asking them for uh, certain resources that I needed to get some of this stuff popped off, it just was not available. So I had to do everything on my own. Everything that you see, I've done on my own. I have all I have the 14 books that I've written in the span of two years. All that shit, all I did that on my own. I own all that stuff. I own the copyright to everything that I've ever done. All those videos, all those clips and stuff, I own all those licenses to the, put, put all them clips together and like them videos and all that and all the music that you hear in the background. I own all that shit, you know? So, you know, that's that's where I'm at now with it. Uh, so you have to do your vetting. You have to do your, your vetting of me and the information I'm going to bring to you in terms of this matriarchal egalitarian structure. But what I really want the black American to do is just keep a very open mind and dump your head of everything that you've ever been taught when it comes to me. When it comes to Western society, this matrix, anything that you've learned in that system, I would say if you could suspend that while you're listening to me and my ideas, they're very different. They are very interdimensional. And they're, they're a little bit ahead of their time. This system will come into play whether I'm here or not. Because what's happening is white people, white women in particular, kind of on to the, this queen mothership shit. The stuff that I've been doing, they've been actually coming to me behind the scenes. And I said, I just ignore it. But they've been coming behind the scenes about this stuff. You know, because they ready to, to, to sit up there and build some matriarchal egalitarian systems for themselves. Uh, these white folks. Because they having some issues with their relations. They are. They having some issues with the, the, the men and the, the women or whatever. And so what you'll see is this system get implemented. But what I'm trying to do is let's get let's do it first. Because this is our system anyways. Like don't wait. Don't don't wait for them to switch to okie doke on you. Black men and black women. Because that's what they're going to do. They're going to switch their system to this system based off of the constellations and the stars based off of their organ their, their brotherhood and what what's coming to an end with them and they know that and we so far behind that we don't see the play that they're the stuff that's the switching and these women are coming to me about asking me about my books and about this queen mothership shit and i just be like this 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 was not for you this was based off of my history this was based off of my people
So the Queen Mothership is for Black Americans and melanated people globally. But to be honest, I don't I don't know if you guys will value it that much. I hope you guys do. But what's going to end up happening? I'm like. A lot of you niggas, y'all don't listen to something unless it's white people tell you anyways. Unless white people do it first anyway. So I said, well, maybe shit. If they do it first, then may eventually they'll they'll copy anyways. Because you copy everything they damn do anyway. So if y'all don't listen to now, if y'all don't rock with it now, as far as what I put out there and what I wrote, what's going to happen, just like with hip-hop, just like with jazz, just like with R&B, uh... Eventually, white people are going to get their hands on it, bastardize it, do their own version of it. Then black people is going to be cool again and it's going to blow up and then black people will, will copy again. They're going to feed you your own history like they've been doing, just like they take everything from you and refeed it to you. This is what white people do. They do that with uh, our, your magic systems, your music genres, your history. They do that with, to you with masonry that is take something from you can barely understand it then try to feed it back to you in in their perverted versions of the things that they come up with so that's what they're going to try to do with the queen mothership i actually been shown a vision of that and i see the way these white women are coming to me asking me about it i see i actually see the way that they their curiosity about the course what, what's the queen mothership can you teach me about the queen mothership am i allowed to be in the queen mothership and i'm looking like i've made this shit for my people this is my people based off of my history. Your history don't your, your history don't have a history of a queen mother shit. Your history is not one that yo, you've always had a Western patriarchal system. Your man always this is the way you always related to your man. Y'all gotta figure that out. Y'all gotta work that out. It ain't got nothing to do with me. That don't got nothing to do with me. If you want a matriarchal egalitarian system, knock yourself out. But don't expect me to come build y'all shit up. Like they want me to come and build they shit up or help these white women. I'm like, look. Whatever y'all man been doing to y'all, I mean, y'all tired of it or whatever, that's on y'all. Because I built, this system is for my people. And what they're going to try to do is 100 years from now is take this system and use it for they shit. Build, re, reverse their, their system and do this queen mothership shit on a large scale. This is what these white people are going to try to do. And what I'm trying to tell this black American is don't, for one, don't let them do that. Do it. Get to it yourself. Get in front of it yourself. Because you are the world's pioneers anyways. You're the world's pioneers of everything. So you want to get in front of this queen mothership matriarchal egalitarian system. Because they're going to fuck up. They're going to fuck this shit up anyways. Because they don't, they, they, they don't know how to run the system without control and domination. They don't know how to run a system uh, without in an egalitarian sense. And they were, if they knew how to do it, they would have done it throughout their history. They don't have not one history of having a matriarchal egalitarian structure. White people do not have not one aspect of their history that shows this. But melanated people do. Melanated indigenous people do. Melanated people in Africa do. They actually have a, an example. So all I did was study that. All I did was say, you know what? Enough with this fighting. Enough with the fighting with the black American man, black American woman. I'm tired of this. this y'all sit up there talking about incels and passport bro. And that high value this and high. It's just, it's all over the place. It lacks structure. It lacks, it's not rooted in history. It's not rooted in your history. And it's not rooted in nature. And the only thing you could point to try to back up your claim is a Bible. And I can pull out the same books from the Bible with teachings of Jesus, say the Nagamati text, that disproves the stuff that you show me in those Bible. Because what I'm saying was originally found in the Bible. When I talk about the Queen Mothership, when I talk about the laws of electromagnetism, and I talk about uh, the law of gender, it was originally in there. It was taken out. It was taken out. Everything that I said in the law of gender with the laws of electromagnetism, Jesus was saying as well. But they just took the teachings out because they did. They they had to set this system up to suppress the divine feminine. Because that is... I can't even go there with y'all. We just gonna get into it. We just gonna get into it because I didn't want to spend too much time on this. Well, all I would say is black American men, black American women, 
have an open ears. Please do not assume that this, oh, this is misandry. Oh, this is you trying to dominate men. If you come with that, just click off this video. If this show approach because you're not ready, you're not enlightened enough to even understand this level of, of, of structure that I'm talking about. You are not the person that I want. You are not the person for me. And I am not the person for you. And that's perfectly fine. If you come in and thinking, if you come with that white man shit, you got to go. You come with any of that white people shit about uh, uh, what Andrew Tate and all that nonsense, and you 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 obsessed with their system, and you got and you in your mind you know you colonized. You have not decolonized yet. If you are not decolonized, do not listen to me. Unsubscribe. Do whatever you got to do. Stay far away from me because I only want the, the black American, the black American men and women who are decolonized in their mind, who are free in their spirit. They want to work with one another. They want to love on one another. They want to build together. We ain't we ain't doing all that fighting and shit and all that arguing that y'all love to do. Y'all sit up there, go take that shit somewhere else. We not doing that. We are a matriarchal, egalitarian society for the black American. Black American men, black American women are welcomed here. They're not going to get disrespected. No one's going to get disrespected. Okay, you got to critique. The black women getting critiqued. The black American men get critiqued. Okay, whatever. We move on. But we're not here to tear anybody down, make anybody feel bad about themselves. That's not what that's not what I exist for. That's not why I came here. I ain't come here to make anybody feel bad about themselves. This world already tear us down enough. So when you come here and you get this knowledge, just know that keep an open mind. If it, be decolonized. Be ready to build. Be a builder. Be ready to love too. Okay, that's all. That's pretty much all I require. Be, be ready to build, be ready to love, and have be be in tune with your heart and your mind. I don't that's all that's all I'd be looking for. Niggas that's ready to build and ready to love. I don't got time for all this argument that y'all love to do. Every time every time I talk about this queen mothership shit, here goes some men that wanna argue about, oh that's feminism. Oh that's this is not motherfucking feminism. I never been a feminist in my motherfucking life. And y'all sitting up there, y'all don't even know what that means. Y'all don't, don't even have the intelligence to even articulate a sound argument. Anything you don't like, somebody, if you don't like what somebody say, you just throw an insult. I don't work that way. Okay? So the Queen Mothership Enterprise Architecture is not feminism. It is not misandry. It is a matriarchal egalitarian system based off the principles of melanated people in America and in Africa. Pre-colonial history. Okay, it is based on that. It is based off the laws of electromagnetism, and it is based off of the animal kingdom in nature. What you see in nature, some of these uh, high-level, sophisticated animals that have keen structure: elephants, lions, dolphin. Well, okay, so that is what it is. I'm sorry. So now I want to read to you what is the Queen Mothership Enterprise Architecture. Remember, this is a matriarchal egalitarian society to build an actual micro city. Okay. So just remember that going in it, okay, if she's talking about some type of structure that we're going to implement and we're based off of coming together and building a ethnic enclave, a micro city, a pocket community together. That's where we're starting. That's your start. That's your focus point. Just know that. Just know that going in. Okay. And okay. She's talking about that. Let me open my ears and see what else she's going to say. So now I'm going to start reading. I just beg of you black american men black american women keep an open damn mind i beg of you to keep an open mind okay after you do your vetting of me you see how i'm very eccentric i don't hide that i am very eccentric i'm a nudist i'm a, I'm a very eccentric wild woman um but if you look through my background, it's like, I don't do nothing but write fucking books and teach. <laughs> and, and I don't, I don't, I don't have, I, I, I just like to write. I'm very cerebral. I just like to write books. I don't, I don't have any backing from anybody. I ain't sent from nobody. I, 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 I grew up, you know, um, in the hood. I was adopted. I was still living in a black American area, but we were middle class. My adopted mom did die uh, when I was very young. And I went, she was an elder. She was an elder when she adopted me. 
she was in her 60s and when she died when I was very young when I was nine years old actually I just went to go live with um her daughter which is my sister my legal sister who was older than my mom who's old enough to be my mom and I've always from when I was with my with my adopted mom who I call granny and when I was with my adopted sister I was always allowed to visit my biological parents my mom and my dad my biological mom and dad was always in the picture uh for a long time for even now so every time so even though I was adopted I've always got visitations with my mom and my dad on a weekly basis even though it was supposed to be closed they let this happen so that's just my background um I went to college uh, I started some businesses didn't know what I was doing I had to figure out everything on my own still figuring out stuff and I really just will right now I really just in the place of where I want to build something with my people that's pretty much it so I just give you some background information on me before we start the reading okay an enterprise architecture is a comprehensive plan for organizing and managing the resources within the enterprise to enable it to achieve its goals it is based on a holistic community view including its technical and business components people processes buying power organizing and technology so all of these things together is what we're going to use to build our enterprise architecture our pocket community remember our, our micro city that we're going to build enterprise architecture can give our community powerful tools to position ourselves in a power position this concept is particularly true for black american communities that have historically been subjected to systemic racism and lack of access to resources so we're going to use our organizing abilities our buying power our people our processes our business components its technical components anything that we got anything that we have together we're going to organize that to put ourselves in a power position it's all enterprise architecture means okay it ain't nothing crazy you hear it yourself no one you know it's in a book i'm literally reading you verbatim out the book okay by embracing the queen mothership and an egalitarian structure black americans can build their own enterprises which are more likely to succeed due to their knowledge of the community's needs see grassroots efforts we know what we need we know what we want and we have to go and do it so based on what our community needs we need our own food we need our own water we need our own housing we need our own land those type of things that's what that sentence means through enterprise architecture we can use data collected from within our communities when designing communities and solutions leading to economic growth development and self-determination so what kind of data can we collect we would collect data on uh, our organizing ability so it's a process called oh man let me go let me go right here and get you the, the, the process that we would use to collect this data because I actually wrote about it I won't be reading that concept on here because it's so in the weeds okay it's called asset mapping here we go where we're gonna map assets that's the data that we, we would collect so we would be seeing who's electrician who's an electrician who's a plumber who's a teacher who's a doctor who is a lawyer who owns a grocery store who knows how to farm that's most important who knows how to fucking farm <laughs> that's the data that we would when I when I say data collection that's what I mean by that okay so that's what I mean when I say data collected from within our communities when designing the communities okay so when we design these communities we making sure we got motherfuckers as plumbers we got electrician we got a doctor we got people that know how to farm we got people that know how to do some water irrigation around this bitch. We got some software engineers. We got people that do some teaching. We got people that do some nursing. You know, we, we just mapping assets. Okay? So that's what I mean by that. So let's go on. By investing in the Queen Mothership Enterprise architecture of Black American communities, we can pull resources that will otherwise be unavailable due to systematic racism and discrimination. Okay, so pretty much whatever resources we got, we will pull them together. No matter how small, no matter how small, we will pull our resources together to build this enterprise architecture. The enterprise architecture also can guide how to best use these resources and help the community increase its chance of success. We're talking about the book itself. 
This enterprise architecture can help to create strong, successful businesses and cities. The Queen Mothership Enterprise Architecture is thus an invaluable tool for empowering Black American communities to build their own micro cities. Okay, so now we got that. So now let's talk about what a micro city is. A micro city, also known as a pocket community, is an intentional small scale residential settlement with a population of anywhere from 10 to seven, several hundred people. And that's that's important because I pretty much need about 20 to 60 black Americans. I, I, we can have more, but what I, the way I set this up is that you can have like a chapter in your own city, your own town. If you could find people in your own city that would want to build this up with you, you will build with those people. See, with me, I'm building my own for me and whoever's around in that city that I'm in because I'm going to be doing mine in itself. Whoever's around and who's on my wavelength, that's who... I would be getting with but you would get with your perspective people in and your city who's like-minded you may have just people that are fba in it you may just want niggas that just say they fba because y'all have some ideological uh framework reference resonance rather you have some some ideological resonance same with freeman freeman has some ideological res resonance that is different from fba me as a sociologist i've studied these two groups they're very different even over the same people I love both equally. I really do. I don't treat any. I don't treat FBA different from Freemans, different from Ados, different from the Black American Indigenous. I don't treat any of them. I don't treat the Negro different, the Gullah Geechee. But they have differences. So say uh, there's a group of Freemans. They're kind of bougie. They're kind of elitist. Uh, I personally um, <laughs> don't mind that, but it is what it is. Um, they may want to come together. Some groups, not all of them, just a certain, maybe 10, 20 of them want to come together and say, okay, she's talking about the, you know, this, this pocket community thing. She got the structure, this whole governance laid out. Let's use that and let's do something together. We'll have a little small town somewhere. They can do that. Same with FBA, same with ADOS. Or we can all mix it up. See, with me, I already told you, I do black American business. I don't care what you identify as. I, I, I got this on record. You can be whatever you want to call yourself and you are welcome here with me. I normally attract, believe it or not, I attract a lot of indigenous, black American indigenous. I attract a lot of the FBAs and then some of the Freemans. The Freemen have this thing where they they, they gotta they can't support the black American indigenous. So even though like the Freemen low key fuck with me, they be liking what I be saying, you know, they, they ideologically we similar, but they are told from I guess they little group think like you everybody has a group think they have a collective group think they feel like they got to fight with the black american indigenous they have to be at odds with them not all of them not all of them definitely not all but from the ones i've ever i can name at least 10 of them that felt like they had to fight me because i was hanging with the indigenous you know i'm like dude why why do you care about that ain't we the same people you know so sometimes you know that gets in a way of building a solid connection with some of the freemen and it's unfortunate you know because that's a little myopic for me but um the, that's that's where the ideological differences can come from then the ados they're a little more open-minded i have to say but I've seen them fighting, you know, I've seen them getting at everybody else too. As far as the ADOS, they're a little bit different. They're a little more open-minded towards the Black American Indigenous. However, um, sometimes the, 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 they're, they're into politics a lot. And I'm, I'm not going to lie, like I'm not really into the politic thing. Um, I'm open to it. I'm learning more about politics, but my mind is just so focused on, let me just get a group of black Americans and let's just build our own shit and live off the grid. Like that's where my mind be at. And to be honest, that can kind of clash with the ADOS. So ideologically, I don't attract as many. I have some, I have some ADOS that respect me, but I don't attract as many ADOS as I do, uh, FBA, which I'm shocked because I'm like, F F I, I didn't think the FBAs would be, um, listen, would, would even take, take the chance to even listen to nothing I had to say. Um, and then the Black American Indigenous, those are the ones that are totally, totally uh, most open to me. So let's keep going. These communities are usually designed and built to promote self sufficiency and communal solidarity. 
Okay, so the enterprise architecture, the Queen Mothership is a matriarchal egalitarian system. It has a pocket community with intentional small scale residential settlement designed to build and promote self sufficiency and communal solidarity. Okay, so Black American men, Black American women, self sufficiency and communal solidarity. In contrast to larger cities, Traditionally viewed as centers of power and inequality, micro cities can provide black Americans with self autonomy and group economics. That's pretty much self explanatory. You know what that means. So now let's talk about what egalitarianism is. Egalitarianism seeks to create equality amongst all members, regardless of their gender or other characteristics. That's pretty much explanatory. There is no domination of the men by the women and there is no domination of the women by the men the women are not able to control the men and the men are not able to control the women because control and domination is not found in, in matriarchal egalitarian systems we are talking about a processes of pragmatism based off of nature so we don't really get into those humans should not seek to control one another they should not seek to dominate one another humans should be humans Men and women should be complementary. Men and women should be incentivizing one another. Men and women should be cooperating together. Okay? So we're not seeking to downplay anyone in this system. And that's the difference between when you see somebody like a nature boy out here where they want to dominate their their women and dominate like these 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 cults and these groups that come out. You see how how they treat each other differently. What's different with the Queen Mothership Enterprise architecture is that it's based off of an egalitarian system. Okay? And now let me keep going. This goal could be achieved by implementing melanated science and social structures that were naturally egalitarian. Remember, I was telling you about the animal kingdom, I was telling you about the pre colonial history. That is what this is based off of. These structures can help create a sense of shared ownership and responsibility, fostering community resilience, and providing members with economic, social, and political self-determination opportunities. Self-determination opportunities. So again, we're egalitarian. Black American men, Black American women, we are practicing our community resilience by providing members with economic, social, and political self-determination opportunities. So what does that mean? What are the economic opportunities? We're going to be talking about uh, alternative economy systems along we'll, we'll still use monetary we're still going to use um money and we still pull resources that way but we're also going to be building out a structure where it's um and i'll get to it out they're going to be a whole video because this is a series so this is a part one so eventually we're going to get to the economics of the egalitarian structure this, this queen mothership has an economics plan okay like we're, we're serious and we we have a two-tiered economic is it two tier three we have three tiers we have one where we're going to be built off community trust which is us literally building our trust fund for ourselves uh then we're going to just focus on what do you do if you don't have a lot of money because this is a chance that they're going to come after us we we talking about some real fucking empowerment we're not talking about going to march on selma and and, and all this nonsense and I, I i i'm not one of these shrill non-profit organizations trying to get you to funnel something in and we gonna all vote democrat and all this bullshit this ain't got nothing to do with democrat republican ain't got nothing to do with none of that we talking about building something for ourselves and you know we we are in tandem i support reparations fight i've been heavily involved in the reparations movement for some years now and um we do need a plan what what happens when you get the reparations what happens if you don't if they don't pay it out so with me i'm thinking of like okay what is the pivot next after uh we get tangibles or we don't get tangibles also what happens if they try to lock us out and we don't have the money that we need to do some of the things we need to do that's where we have alternative economy i'll be teaching you about that we'll be working on that together and it's it's totally something that has been done but again we we've moved so removed from our own melanated structures so where i'm gonna be telling you so i'm gonna be showing you about uh alternative barter economy based off of a point system 
Like you're gonna be able to get haircuts, get hair uh, with, with each other in the community. You're gonna be able to do nails, do babysitting, car services, food services, um, clothing. All of that's gonna be done on a on a, on a economy that doesn't need money. Okay, so we're gonna do things off of a point system. And I'll teach you about that as we go further in the Queen Mothership Enterprise architecture. But that's the economic component of it. The social aspect of it is that we have councils. I'll get into the councils. Um, one of the councils being the Council for Minimal Men. We have the Council of the Queen Mothership. We have the Council of the Elders. We have the Council for the Children. This is, again, a structure. Everybody has a role to play. And within those structures... We're all equal. So we're talking about that in a, 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 in a social sense. What does that mean for the political sense? You have, uh, we have voting. We have elections. We have, nobody's selected. You have an election for the most part. Um, there, there's uh, a criteria for those elections. It's, it's, men and women also can hold the same political power within the, and a pilot, political power is different in a sense because we're not, really involved with like the, the political system is like oh democrat republican we're not really involved in that but when we talk about the politics just politics of the queen mothership enterprise architecture itself the councils that you have to run for um you know just like say for instance there's um committees there's certain committees the committees i don't believe there's an election for the committee i have to go back and read read my book and see what i put in for there but like say for the uh, admiral branch Outside of uh, me, as the uh, as the chief ar architect that came up with this system, you have to run for the admiral branch. The admiral branch consists of a black American man and a black American woman. They have to run for that position within their respective cities or whatever. And by that, they just have to just the follow, there's a criteria to advocate. All this stuff is all written out in the book. It's all there, and that's in the different parts of the series. So that's what that means by egalitarian everything is structured out to where it is completely equal okay and where there's no obsession with dominance and control there's none of that in this system it's just not and if and if you guys have like an issue with that then it's, i'm just not the person for you but um there are plenty of black american men plenty of black american women who have grew, grown up with some familiarities of a matriarchal indigenous system or they may be learned, they may be well educated, and understand that melanated people had a matriarchal system. So, if you understand those concepts, then this should be easy to digest. I should not have like this should not be freaking anyone out, okay? So let's keep going. In addition to these structural foundations, micro cities could also embrace principles such as communal decision making. That's going to be some of the voting that we do. Resource sharing. Remember, that's what we'll be doing. And cooperative services that can further strengthen the collective power of black Americans. We have already been locked out. We are already facing a, a, a racial wealth gap. We're already facing some serious disparities. So we have to pivot and come up with alternative at every direction because it's based off of your frequency and your residence. So what I'm doing is when I come up with alternative economy systems like okay we don't have no dollars how are we going to be able to trade with one another how are we going to be able to get the services that we need we're going to set up a fucking alternative economy we literally going to have an app around this bitch i'll build the app i'll have the background in technology i can build it i can build it out most likely or, or and i have also have a friend that um was a black man uh, I, uh that built something that can build this out I, I know people that can build this out so i'm not worried about that you know, and we come up with alternative communal systems, community gardens, co-ops, all types of shit. Okay, so that's what that part means. So let's keep going. We're almost done here. The next chapter that we'll focus on is governance. So let's talk about the community development. I'm going to keep reading. To determine who to focus on in building our community, we begin with these questions. Who do I want to build with? I already told you that's black American men, black American women who are familiar with matri matriarchal egalitarian systems, who want to build, who want to love, and who want to get in power. That's it. They not they fearless. You gotta be fearless. 
because you never know what's gonna come after us because we talking about some real fucking empowerment shit we ain't talking about taking no money from george soros taking some taking some money from these white folks and doing nothing we doing this shit ourselves we buying our own land we're getting our own cities built we talking some real serious shit we're building a structure we're building a whole governance out a whole outlay of how it's a way of life it's a way of life and we believe in love we believe in righteousness and we believe in an oasis of love and peace for the black american the black american deserves peace the black american deserves freedom the black american deserves love the black american deserves fun because we're going to be having some fun in the Queen Mothership, too. We're going to have all types of programs. We're going to be having some. We, this is going to be a small group of us, and we're going to be living in our own little fucking utopia. We about, I mean, we ain't saying we ain't going to ever have no issues or nothing. Because there's always, you know, we're going to work our shit out. And we're going to have an old utopia. Friday night's passion. We're going to have a nice little, we having a, we're going to have literally a day for black American men. And we're going to have a day for the black American woman. A day for the black American men. Uh, they're going to have their special day. Once a year where we celebrate them. And then we're going to have a special day for the black American woman. To celebrate her. We're probably going to do it on a weekend. So that Saturday and Sunday we we do each one. And we just. This is a, so festivities to celebrate ourselves. Festivities. Parties. After we do our building. First we got to do a lot of building. Though. We're going to be doing a lot of fucking building. Because we got to. We gotta get this land. We gotta put in the irrigation. Get we gotta get permits. We gonna have to uh, get some of these materials. And we found some. I found, I found some materials that are definitely within that we can afford. That we can that we can build. It's gonna be real strong to build our houses out of. You know, I've been looking at certain even the way we build the houses. All energy efficient. I thought of it all. We are gonna cover it all. It's all in the book about inner energy efficient. The windows, the pavement, the way to pay, the way the grass is laid out. Everything is already designed for when we get this land. What we gonna do with the land? You can buy land. What the fuck you gonna do? We gonna have committees. We have a water committee, a land committee, the common house committee, the marriage committee. We got all that worked out. It's all in the book. Okay. So let me continue. What is the purpose of these Black Americans coming together? I already told you. These are the questions I want you to ask yourself. Like, okay, make sure that you're you're you're, you're answering these questions yourself because you want to make sure. That you vet in the person. This is kind of like as I'm as you're asking these questions to yourself, you're listening to my responses. You're saying, okay, this is how we're vetting her mindset. What I want the Black American man and the Black American woman to do is to vet my mindset. You want to vet the mindset of people that you're following or people that you listen to. Vet their motherfucking mindset. Sometimes it's not about who the person is connected to and all this stuff. You gotta vet their motherfucking mindset. Okay. So as I'm asking these questions, that's what you that's what you listen to my responses. What is the purpose of these black Americans coming together? What does my community need more of? We need more power. That's what we need. More motherfucking power. Competing in alternative parallel structures and being successful at it. Competing and creating parallel infrastructure for ourselves that rivals that of any of these systems that we currently see that rivals this matrix you understand me we ain't trying to dismantle nobody else shit but we damn sure about to build some parallel structures for ourselves and we're going to defend it okay and we're going to have fun when we building our shit out there nice hard days of work we gonna have shit planned out on friday nights we're gonna have some planned out on saturday nights each friday night we're gonna have something planned for us Family time. Because this is a family that we build in. Don't look at this as like you got to not be yourself and you got to, you know, it comes with a certain way. No, you got to be yourself and we are a family. We are one. I don't care if you're saying you're a free man, you're ADOS, you're FBA, you're fucking in black indigenous. I don't give a shit. I don't care if you're saying you're Negro, you're Creole, you're Gullah, Geechee. No. Be yourself. Come with your ideology, whatever. Have an open mind. And if you resonate with me, if you resonate with me, let's make something shake. Let's build something together for ourselves, for our legacy, for our, for our future generations, for our children. Let's build a whole governance. Let's, let's do something for ourselves. And we always did stuff for ourselves. We, how many cities we've had? How many? We've built so many black Wall Streets. Come on. We've had, what, over 200 cities that this government destroyed. 
and we're going to have more. We're going to have another, well, we're going to have another 200. Matter of fact, we're going to have thousands, thousands, right? Because our people are great. I, no more low self-esteem, black American. No more feeling bad about yourself. No more letting this society lie to you about yourself. You're going to have a high, high, high level of confidence fucking with the queen mothership because we don't play that. Mm -mm, we don't. Our children got to believe in themselves. Our, our children are fearless. Our children are like, look, we the gods in this bitch. We the gods and goddesses in this bitch. We, we, what we say goes. We're able to focus our mind power and build what we want. We put our mind to it and it comes to fruition. Okay? That's it. Now, what change do we desire? What problem can only be solved by working together? The problems that we deal with with racism and inequality. Racism, white supremacy. We can solve those problems by working together, black American. By working together and building our own ethnic enclaves. Just like how they got little Chinatown, how they got little Korea, how they got, they even got a little Haiti, they got a little Ethiopia, they got a little Senegal in New York with a bunch of businesses. I've seen it, I've been there, I've seen it. And I'm like, okay, where the hell is our business district? Where is our, we, we need one too. But they always try to stop us from building it and we're like, no more, we're gonna build it. In spite of what everything they done, we're coming together and we're building it. And yes, we are a matriarchal egalitarian system, and we believe in power. We not we, we don't we don't we one thing we don't do is just be all over the place and just fragment it. Now this is a structure. Think of the phalanx. Think of the Greek phalanx. Remember that phalanx system? Think of that shit. Cause I'm I'm dead ass serious. Now let's keep going. Community development can only occur when black Americans are committed to investing in themselves and their resources. Everyone has unique capacities, abilities, and gifts. If people feel valued, then individuals will make a positive impact on their community. That's what it's about. Every black American in the queen mothership, in my queen mothership, in a queen mothership chapter, wherever you're at, you are valued. You are valued. That's what you need to take from that. You have special unique capabilities, special gifts. And we value that. We appreciate those gifts in the Queen Mothership, whether you're male or female. We embrace those gifts and we're gonna we're gonna put everybody's gifts on the table. And we're not doing a lot of that jealousy shit. All that arguing that y'all like to do and try to play other people down and knock and tear other people down, you're not doing that in the Queen Mothership. Do not. If someone is special and got gifts, you gotta honor that. We honor people's gifts in the Queen Mothership, okay? We don't get jealous because once you got once you got God consciousness in your mind, once you operate at a very high fucking level of vibration, all that walk out the door. Because those person gifts is gonna make the Queen Mothership stronger. It will. Whatever gift you got, you only gonna make your community stronger. That's why we do not frown upon intellectualism. We don't frown upon niggas that know shit, people that got gifts. We don't we don't sit up there and try to do some janky shit. And we do not promote low values in the Queen Mothership. We don't promote stuff that's gonna be a detriment to the black American. So we don't promote doing a lot of drinking. We don't promote doing a lot of fuck around and bullshitting. And we don't promote baby mama drama, single parenthood. We don't promote uh, certain things and we don't we don't we don't promote damaging music to the black woman and to the black man we don't promote the killing of black women and black men we don't promote none of that we don't promote drugs we don't promote that in the queen mothership we're a very structured society okay we're very enlightened people so let's keep going what is queen mothership part two the queen mothership is a network of black americans dedicated to creating self-determination via urban villages, economics, technology, and land ownership through the creation of pocket communities or micro cities. The Queen Mothership strives to develop innovative economic models that can be adopted by individual Black Americans who want to start their own branch. I'm running the, the headquarter one, but eventually 
we'll have black Americans and a black American man and a black American woman. They can each start a chapter because again, this is egalitarian. So we're not suppressing the masculine because matriarchal structures do not believe in domination and control. One thing that that the matriarchal structure has to emphasize, though, that they didn't, that we did emphasize in the past, is defense, war strategy, military science. That's where we kind of went wrong as melanated people. It's not putting too much emphasis on that military science. So that's that's something that uh, that I've taken into account. We'll get into that too. We'll get into we going there too. We going deep. This is what I want for my people. I never want. I want my people having strong, thriving communities, man. Like I, I want, I want like, like nice, our, our children just having so much fun, just home homeschooling. I personally would teach, I, I'm a teacher, you know? I, I personally will teach the kids shit, you know? After I get done with my building, I, I, can, I can run the, the, we need our own schools and my shit. He said, we need our own schools, we need our, shit. We can build a little something and, you know, nice little shit. It don't have to be all big. You ain't got to get no big ass building. Nothing. You know, you just build something real small with our little children because it's only going to be like a, a couple of us anyway. So all the little childrens, I can homeschool them. I can homeschool childrens that that are young and in their high school years with science, physics, mathematics. I can home. I could teach children pretty much anything. I I can teach them things that they need to learn to learn to. to uh, I could teach them anything that they need to survive in this world. So. I can I can cover the teaching stuff. I can also cover the technology stuff. I can cover like a lot of shit. But I'm only one person. But um, once we have these apparatuses set in place, you know, we want stuff for our children. So I just think of a society where like our children can actually thrive, learning melanated science, having fun. And I know like I know that sounds like why do you keep saying fun? Because again. That once we get done with the building aspect of it, we are going to build certain controls within the system that allow for us to relax and have fun. Seriously. So like, for instance, we the, 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 the children have their own councils. They have their own council meetings. And, they, and what they'll do is they'll be planning their own parties. They'll be planning something just for them to do on the weekend. And we're going to have to have the uh, chaperone duties played, you know, leveled out. Because what we're going to do is... Everyone is going to have to sign up for a day where they want to do some of the chaperone. They won't be able to party that that, that day. They'll have to chaperone the children, including me. But we want our children to be having some, you know, this is for our babies. Like this, this is us creating a whole new generation of, of, of children, of men, and of women. You know? So... It can be adapted by any individual black American who want to start a new chapter. Like with me, I'm going to be in the South. Maybe that black person, maybe another black American will be in the West somewhere. Maybe they'll be in Texas. Maybe they'll be in Georgia. And they don't found five, 10 people, 20 people that want to do this queen mothership shit. And they want to start a branch. They can do that. And they have a whole outline, a whole structure of governance, how to do the elections, how to do the application process to run for the, for to make these councils. How do you make the councils? How to get the land? How to do the community trust? How to do the, the point system economy? How to, it's, it's literally all out there. Okay. A key component of the Queen Mothership mission is the chapter program. Chapters are formed by local groups and serve as the cornerstone of the Queen Mothership's presence within a particular geographic area. I pretty much covered that. I have branches because we're not all going to be in the same city, you know. They are led by directors who volunteer and participants from the community. So pretty much they're led by those who want to do it. You ain't got to be forced to do it. If you don't like what I'm talking about, you don't like me, you don't like matriarchal systems... And just do you. But you'll never find a structure that is, that is laid out as this. I can guarantee you. I can guarantee you in two, about 2,000 years, there has never been a system that has been this ar- this meticulous. I'm a chief architect. I could come up with systems in my head. I can see it, and I'm able to build it out. And I've been doing this for a long time. So now I'm just putting this where I just want to do this for my people. That's where we're at. Okay, so let's keep going. Chapters create sustainable relationships between their members. Each chapter is responsible for designing initiatives that will best fit their individual needs while adhering to the Queen Mothership's core values. Yes, we do have some core values regarding how the black men 
get treated regarding how the black woman gets treated how the black children gets treated this is serious stuff they, these are precious souls black americans have precious souls like i'm i'm so i've never been so more serious about anything in my life as i am, as I am about this so I, we have to do this right okay so there are some core values there are some tenets okay uh, the goal of each chapter is to provide its members with various opportunities and resources that will empower them to be self-sufficient. Because remember, we all start with some land, a chapter. We, we build in our own little, little enclaves around the, the country. First one is going to be with me. I'm, I'm not expecting this to pop off right away. Just because just I'm putting this video out here, I don't expect people to just start moving right now. I have to build up. My credibility, I have to build up my, you know, like, people have to trust me, you know, and people have to, one, understand what I'm even talking about, because I, I, I honestly believe I'm a little bit too ahead of my time with this, but it is what it is. So I think once you, once you uh, listen to these, these little series, you know, listen to these audio clips, please, and I'll keep an open mind and you can understand more about me and listen to my other videos, read my books, like, I talk about the law of gender. I have books for the queen mothership, the doctor philosophy. I have books for black Americans and their cultural protections and, and for, for black Americans. A lot of books for them. I have herb books. I have all types of stuff. So as you're getting to know me as a person, in okay, case this is a person that you can rock with, you know, do some do some research on me and do some research on my work. Being able to understand my mind, the best way to understand my mind is to understand some of the work that I've put out. The, and be honest, I've already like put some, like a lot, all those videos that you see with me talking, especially with me reading my content on the fucking internet. Listen to that stuff because that's what's going to make you really see, okay, this is the type of person she is. You know, some of you can probably are a good reader of people or you already have like gifts of discernment so you can see certain things already just from just one video you can tell but for those who like i really want to know what this person's mind is like the best way to do that is through my books and through listening to the audios the 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 narrative films and the intellectual property i already have on on in video that's the best way to do that um so let's keep going Another goal is to pull resources to obtain the things we need through these efforts. Chapters also act as a vehicle for the broader Queen Mothership mission, facilitating knowledge sharing and promoting economic power and justice on a local level. Okay, so you guys get that. The Queen Mothership relies heavily on grassroots organizing and collaboration. So no, we don't take no money from outside sources. Um, I haven't taken any money from outside sources. And... But this is a grassroots thing, so we have to do we have to do the funding ourselves. If you don't want, you know, having mission drift and having these corporations tell us what the fuck to do and in control of our agenda, we have to do the grassroots organizing ourselves. Like we can pull our shit together, man. We do not need we do not I know they try to make it seem like we need them. We don't. We don't. All we got is ourselves, and that's all we gonna have. And to be honest, those are the best people to work with. I am looking more so through our working class and our Black American middle class and Black American working class and Black American wealthy. I am looking for some of those too, and we come together, we pull our resources together. But I really want that unproduced, that unfiltered Black American. I don't want people who are bought and paid for. I want I want the real deal, real black Americans that's like, look, I'm ready to build. You know, like those people. And that's and, and to be honest, like I'm looking around as I'm in a reparation space and I'm looking around and I'm like, damn, like it's so many people that's bought and paid for in this space. Like it's so many people that's that's not that's not grassroots, but they say any grassroots. That's the part that's confusing to me. I'm like, how how are you fucking grassroots? But you funded by fucking George Soros? The fuck? And you funded by the Rockefellers? Like, get the fuck out of here. That is not motherfucking grassroots. What the fuck? I mean, like, are you kidding me? So I'm like, we gotta we gotta fund this shit. We gotta fund this, Black Americans. We have to do this. Obviously, we're gonna have to work with the uh, city's local authorities on like certain 
things like when we do our water collection because we're going to be trying to do to get a permit for like this storm water uh how we're going to do our gray water and all this stuff like we got to plan all that out and so we are going to need a permit uh in some in some regards you know just making sure that that even like the way you do your your driveways they typically are a certain amount of feet but we're going to do ours a little bit different we're going to do ours 26 feet wide there's reasons for that because it affects housing and uh in terms of like the heating the cooling of a house believe it or not it's all it all gets affected so we're going to do ours a little different where we can save on like our electric bills and our and our heating and our gas but just the way you lay out your motherfucking pavements because believe it or not those pavements uh they can they can raise the weather you know the temperature up about a good five to ten degrees so we're gonna be focusing on that and even the way you plant a tree will affect your utility bills the, the, the electric system it affects your gas it will affect all of that even the way you place a window I've studied all of this. Like the, we got, we gonna we have our certain way we do our windows. We got, <laughs> it's all in the book. Um, and the reason why I have done that because I keep seeing people say that matriarchal systems have no structure, and they're not planned. And I'm like, that that is the most stupidest thing that I have ever heard in my life. And I'm like, um, okay, so they thinking that if you if you if you offer a structure that they, they keep saying that and it's like it's just not true and so now you have somebody that's over planning and over organizing over structuring stuff because they have to compensate for the notion that a matriarchal structure is just anything goes and that's just completely hogwash so that is why I thought of certain things of even window placements in our homes the actual materials that we build it with where we would build it how we would build it you know the committees for there's a there's a housing committee that's literally just focused on the actual materials and that we, we they meet on a bi-weekly basis and then the head of every committee has a weekly as a the head of every committee will have a monthly meeting with me and we would all share the information from the water committee from the electrician committee from the uh food committee because we have to do a lot of farming because we're gonna be farming our own shit so we all gonna have the final meeting with me and i'll talk about all that i, I won't even talk about that right now because i i actually cover that in the other video series that will be on this because this is only part one okay so let's keep going to ensure success, chapters must build strong networks amongst their members and local allies in order to create an atmosphere of support and empowerment for all involved. The potential impact of such collective efforts is immense. Regardless of size or scope, every step taken towards self-determination via these pocket communities, economics, technology, and land ownership is another step closer to the ultimate goal of black empowerment and freedom. With a Queen Mothership chapter, individuals can link up in small groups Purchase land and create a micro city that will serve as an example of what self-determination and innovative economic models can achieve. I already kind of talked to you about that. Um, such micro cities are potential sites for social, cultural, and political growth and financial stability. They are. By providing members with resources and support systems and empowering them to take control of their own destinies through collective action, the Queen Mothership is determined to make its vision for self-determination a reality for Black American communities everywhere. Through this commitment to community-driven solutions and grassroots activism, the Queen Mothership is creating a powerful new platform for Black Americans to realize the power of collective action. Africans can also use this book as a blueprint to start Queen Mothership chapters in their homeland. So that is pretty much uh, from the book. We're going to cover chapter two, which is governance. You, really, you guys are really going to love that. So black men and black women, you, you want to pay attention to the governance chapter because that's where you learn about the council of formidable men. What are the men going to be doing? What are the women going to be doing? What are the elders going to be doing? What are the children going to be doing? We have councils for each one. We're going to talk about the admiral branches. We're going to be talking about how these branches get elected. What is the process? What is the criteria? And, you know, don't think that these, you know, that these criteria are so hard or anything like that. These are just uh, black Americans, you know, 
coming together and you're gonna love that governance chapter so i'm gonna read you the governance then we're gonna cover some some really nitty-gritty stuff i mean this we talk about a lot of stuff we even talk about future technology i'm not going to cover that though because that's going to be so, so boring because like i was literally explaining like what fusion powers and uh, renewable energy the stuff we're gonna be doing or, like the stuff we're gonna be doing on in our queen mothership is it, it it is gonna be very powerful because you gotta realize it's a change of guard like this, this change of guard where melanated people are at the bottom that's dying out that system is dying out y'all and i can feel it you know that in, the, in the, the, the age of the divine matriarchy is coming back it was a great matriarchy uh, that was primarily ran by black women and that was systematically torn down and, and we went through the age of pisces with the patriarchal systems for the last two thousand years and that system is falling so that's why i'm trying to tell this black american man to get in front of it because you're gonna be this black american man if y'all can support me in these efforts with this queen mothership stuff this matri matriarchal egalitarian system you have no idea the pioneers that you will look like in the future for helping your woman build that out you have no idea if y'all help if y'all help this black woman build her queen mothership out even if it's just a small amount of y'all even if it's just a small amount of y'all you have no idea how you would be looking like you would look like the pioneer of men to usher in the system because eventually white people are going to copy this they are they are you know they are they are going to copy this queen mothership enterprise architecture because the book is out is the, this already the, the blueprint is already out so the government will monitor this and they will copy this system they will try to corporatize this right now it's so raw it's so it's so black american it's ours it's ours and it's going to stay ours now it's going to stay ours but if the men kind of don't get on board and they just trample all over it what's going to happen is white people are going to be able to take they're gonna, they're gonna try to take this shit, hijack it through their system. Talk about queen mothers. They're gonna, they're gonna be having something tantamount to it, and then they're gonna look like they can't. The, the men that support the white woman in doing that, they're gonna look like they've created something so innovative for their woman. That's what it's gonna look like if y'all, if y'all don't step up with this. Um, I personally will always get the credit for coming up with this system because it's documented it's already out and published so i'm not worried about that but what i'm worried about is other people with access to the blueprint because the blueprint is out there because we're not hiding nothing we, we just being human beings a fifth dimensional seventh dimensional human beings on a very high vibration that's that's we're all walking in love and righteousness that want to build with one another as black americans that's what we're doing so the blueprint is nothing to hide it's a matriarchal egalitarian system based off the laws of electromagnetism in nature that's, that's all it is. So what's going to happen is other people are going to be like, oh, that shit about the laws of electromagnetism and the law of gender and what's going on in nature. That shit is true. Let me let me do that system, too. And you're going to see other groups of people, Asians, white people, copy. What I'm trying to tell you is to get in front of this. Get in front of this because it's coming anyways. I'm trying to tell you, I'm sounding the alarm saying, hey, black people, we're going back into the age of Aquarius. We're going back into the age of the great matriarch. We already did this before. White people never done this. We've already done this. And they are scrambling. This white man is scrambling because he realized, damn, uh, the age of Saturn ain't no joke. This age of Saturn ain't no joke. And Uranus energy is all over the place. Uranus energy is revolutionary. And their system is dying out. How do they keep their how are they gonna keep their system from dying out? They're gonna try to implement this system. We talking about economies without motherfucking money? How do you build an economy without motherfucking money? And we're gonna have something that we can scale? Because we're always gonna have we're gonna do the trust fund thing, so we're gonna have uh, uh, ways to grow our money and, and have it you know have some compound interest build we're not just gonna go back to the stone age or nothing but we're gonna be, we're gonna have other systems in place too like we're gonna be multifaceted fucking black americans multifaceted in everything uh and and people are gonna copy that they're gonna copy you they're gonna be looking like damn they done did it again like we you know how we did with hip-hop how we did with the black panther party how people copy the food the lunch system off of them how they copy the the, the current medical system off of them they're gonna be looking and they're gonna be doing that 
But the blueprint is already out there. And I'm telling you, this white woman is already coming to me asking if I want the queen mothership for me too. Can I do the queen mothership? That's what they doing. And if y'all don't get in front of this, <laughs> don't say I didn't tell you. Because you want to, you've always been the pioneer. So I'm telling this black American man, because I know the black American woman, uh, there's some there's some plans in place and, and just in case the, the men uh, do not support this. Uh, there are some things that we can pivot. But I know I can find. It, it, again, it's the, 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 the goal is not to get all black Americans on board with this. Because it's, that's, never, that's just unrealistic, right? But it's for those of us who are just ready, man. We fifth dimensional beings. We tired of this fucking matrix. We tired of being at the bottom. We know we are great. <laughs> we know we're fucking geniuses. And we know we can build our own shit. And we got a lot of love in our heart. And we love our people. And we're fearless. And we will die to protect our people. We 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 are very serious. Okay. We are very, very much uh in tune with our ancestors. Okay, we are very much in tune with the nature of the universe. And we are guided by God. You know, like it's like God is literally on our side and the universe bends towards justice. So we don't have nothing to worry about. That's what I do want to tell you, Black American. Don't be afraid of nothing. Don't worry about nothing. We're going to be fine when we build this system. And I know like when we talk about power, niggas get scared. Niggas get scared when you talk about getting yeah, some power now. So that's when you get the coons, you get the agents, you get people that come out and try to distract us. And we got mechanisms for intelligence, for monitoring intelligence and monitoring, you know, Chaos agents and all we got we got a I don't program for that too. I'm not playing in this bitch. Yo, I'm I'm dead ass serious. And I know I already know I'm on the list and I don't give a damn. Because like if they gonna take me out, they were gonna do they would have bended it. You have no idea the shit that I have experienced this year with surveillance and weird, weird, weird shit on levels that even if I was to talk about, you wouldn't believe me any fucking ways so it's no point the people that is closest to me that know what happened that know what, what i went through you know uh unfortunately in uh august people that are close to me they have the scoop and they, i will i will have to go to my grave keeping some 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 secrets and keeping some shit to myself because it's way too un it's it, it's eventually other people will start saying the same thing as me and i already found a couple other people that that went through what i went through so I'm like, okay, I know I'm not crazy. There are other people that went through what I went through. And I'm like, damn, this shit is real. You know, so I'm like, well, if they're going to kill me, if they, they would have did it. Because <laughs> they had the chance. And I ended up uh, uh, getting out of that situation. Thank God. Thank God. Uh, it was very sinister. Very, very, very creepy stuff, man, out here. In terms of uh, when they want to surveillance you and when they want, want to monitor you. Because you are talking about empowerment. Because you're not back. You're a free agent. I am completely a free agent out here. I'm not initiating any groups. <laughs> then I'm not. And it's not so much. I'm not a danger so much because of like. Oh I care about black American empowerment. That's an aspect of it too. But it's actually the spiritual shit. It's the spiritual knowledge that I know. That got me like. That, that, that's, that has. That's what believe it or not. Those of us that are spiritualists that are out here rogue and free agents believe it or not that's one of the biggest threats to this matrix that's one of the biggest and i i didn't know that until i found and i found out the hard way that it is i found out the hard way that it is having access to certain spiritual knowledge because gods give it to you or because the universe gives it to you whoever you believe in and i'm talking to you black american because many of you are spiritually gifted those of you who are spiritually gifted you know what I mean, and you 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 know you see certain things and you know certain things about certain shit, and they try, and you get an intimidation and sh keep your mouth shut about talking about certain shit because you're not initiated in this or nothing. You're not supposed to know it, man. I would tell you to be quiet about it. They don't test it. Don't 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 test it. I'm not the only person that they have went after and had to get out of a situation. Like I've seen people. That, that would not shut up, that kept talking, and now they ask, uh, is in a crazy house, or they done drugged them up so bad, and now they're not the same anymore, where they can't even make a coherent sentence. This shit is serious. Do, if you are like me, spiritually gifted, you know some shit, don't try to test the waters and go all on the internet and be like, hey guys, this is da, 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 da. I, I tried it, they almost got me out the motherfucking pain. That shit is very serious. <laughs> 
and um it's kind of it's kind of you know i'm not scared or anything but it's just like you have to use your wisdom too you have to use wisdom and good judgment and i want to be here to do what i want to do for the black american so believe it or not this is not as this this queen mothership enterprise architecture um is is not it, it, we'll be able to do it that's what i'll say is we'll be able to uh, successfully build this out without too much getting our way because we're not doing anything illegal, right? We're building completely, you know, autonomous cities and we're working together. We're building these co-ops, we're building these cooperative villages and that's all that we're, we're pretty much doing but we're having it based off of the, the laws of electromagnetism, laws of nature and we're keeping in the context our ancestry, the universe, so and that's a very beautiful thing. This is a very innovative and peaceful and loving approach to life. Okay? And that's what I want you to take away from this. You know, so don't be afraid of power now. Don't be getting all scared or nothing. Like if you if you if nothing I said made you scared. You might be the one I'm looking for, seriously. So, because we won't be doing our building for a little while, because right now we're, we're I gotta get, I gotta do this whole series. I need you to, to listen to the series first and see if it's something you want to do, and then we have to go through the vetting process, and then we, we will uh, eventually get to the building stage of this Queen Mothership Enterprise architecture. So, chapter two is the governance. And I will be reading that to you in another video. You guys are going to love that. We're going to talk about who could start a chapter, the age requirements, the what each chapter should be doing. Then we're going to talk about the, the councils, the branches, how are they chosen. It's going to be so fascinating. Then we're going to get into the serious stuff such as land building. We got some, some stuff about land, land acquisition. Then we're going to talk about all types of stuff. I really just enjoy writing this. Damn, another two hour video. Why do I do this to myself? Okay, I'm about to get off here, y'all. I love y'all and I'm gonna talk to you later. Bye.